Leg ulcers are a serious problem. Especially venous leg ulcers affect the well being of millions of people worldwide. BSN Medical provides caregivers, physicians, and patients with a full spectrum solution to the challenges of the therapy of venous leg ulcers. With this video, we will give you an overview on the medical background, the diagnosis, and the effective treatment. These are the topics. First, we will deal with common indications of leg ulcers and the question of how venous leg ulcers develop. After that, we will demonstrate why compression is so important for the treatment of venous leg ulcers. The differential diagnosis with ankle brachial pressure index is shown next. Further, we will talk about the measurement of compression and the stiffness factor of the used materials. Measurement of sub bandage pressure and the definition of static stiffness index will be shown next. Then we will give an overview on concomitant treatment options. The next topic we will look into is the choice of the appropriate compression system. After, we will give a brief product introduction to the new Job's Comprofor multilayer bandaging and provide you with a step by step application guide. Followed by an introduction to the new 2 in 1 compression system. Finally, we would like to recommend to you BSN Medical as a full solution provider for the therapy of venous leg ulcers. Commonly, a leg ulcer is a symptom of an underlying disease. Ulcer wounds can be caused by venous, arterial, or mixed disease, or have hematological or dermatological causes. Or it could be an infectious, neoplastic, traumatic, or neuropathic disease. Studies show that approximately 70% of leg ulcers have venous causes. Arterial ulcers are caused by insufficient blood flow through the arteries in the leg due to partial or complete blockage and account for about 10% of all leg ulcers. Mixed ulcers account for approximately 10%. This is representative data from German investigations. Other studies may show slightly different values. Even though the underlying diseases are quite different from each other, visually, the most common leg ulcers are hard to differentiate. But since every indication requires a distinct therapy, there has to be a clear diagnosis of the underlying disease. In order to clearly reveal the underlying disease and ensure the right therapy will be applied, a differential diagnosis of the arterial blood pressure at the ankle is strongly recommended. As venous leg ulcer is the most common underlying disease, this will be the focus from here on out. Venous leg ulcers are the most severe characteristic of chronic venous insufficiency. In order to improve the accuracy of a diagnosis and the communication between specialists, venous disease of the legs can be classified using the four elements of the CEAP classification. CEAP stands for Clinical Severity, Etiology, Anatomy, and pathophysiology. For initial assessment, the clinical severity is the most important and can be assessed by simple observation. There are seven grades of increasing severity. C0, no visible evidence of venous disease. C1, superficial spider veins. C2, simple varicose veins only. C3. Ankle edema of venous origin. C4. 
Skin pigmentation in the gator area. C5. Healed venous leg ulcer. C6. Active venous leg ulcer. Venous disease is mainly caused by venous valve incompetence, leading to compromised blood flow to the heart. Regularly functioning venous valves open when blood flows toward the heart. They close to prevent blood from flowing back towards distal. Deficient valves allow for venous blood to reflux. This leads to an ambulatory venous hypertension, which also extends into the capillaries. Ultimately, nutrients and oxygen are unable to diffuse to the skin. This causes changes or even death of skin tissue and the development of a venous leg ulcer. The aim of treatment of the underlying disease in the care of venous leg ulcers is to eliminate venous hypertension. In most cases, this is achieved by using compression therapy. Among other treatment options, such as vascular surgery, sclerotherapy, and ablation, compression therapy can be considered the cornerstone in the therapy of venous leg ulcers. Sustained compression therapy significantly accelerates the healing of venous leg ulcers, as indicated by numerous studies. Compression of 40 mm mercury or more at the ankle supports venous return and shows significant effects on deep venous hemodynamics. Compression therapy has various positive effects. The diameter of veins is reduced, which therefore decreases the venous blood volume as the venous blood pressure increases. Venous reflux is reduced and the muscle pump function is supported. This supports improved microcirculation and increased lymph drainage. Ultimately, compression treatment leads to reduction in leg edema and regression of lipodermatosclerosis. Different underlying diseases have varying causes and require distinct therapies. Though compression therapy can be considered the cornerstone in the treatment of venous leg ulcer, it would be strictly contraindicated in case of arterial leg ulcer. In order to rule out an underlying arterial disease, differential diagnosis becomes necessary. Color duplex ultrasound scanning is the gold standard for differential diagnosis. As it is often not available, the patient's ABPI, the ankle brachial pressure index, can be assessed by fairly simple means. The pressure values of the ankle and the arm are measured by using a blood pressure cuff and a Doppler probe. The systolic pulse pressure for the artery is given at pulse return when the cuff is deflated. The ankle brachial pressure index is the result of the arterial pressure difference between the ankle and the arm. P leg is the highest systolic pressure at the ankle. P arm is the highest of the left and right arm brachial artery pulse pressure. An example, if pressure leg is 125 and pressure arm is 130, the ABPI is 0.96. What does that mean? At an ABPI value of 0.8 and above, an arterial disease can be excluded. Values between 0.6 and 0.8 may indicate a mixed disease. An ABPI of below 0.6 point to an arterial insufficiency. At an ABPI of 0.8 and above, Compression therapy is the choice of treatment. A mixed ulcer can be treated with reduced compression. An index value of lower than 0.6 suggests an arterial cause. Compression therapy then would be strictly contraindicated.
When using compression devices, the applied pressure is differentiated between resting and working pressure. Continuous pressure that is exerted onto the body from the outside with the muscles at rest is called resting pressure. Doctors recommend 40 millimeter mercury at the ankle for the treatment of venous leg ulcers. Working pressure is exerted temporarily from inside outwards as the muscles are working and the diameter of the body part increases. At this point, the specific stiffness of a compression device becomes a crucial factor. The material of the compression device has a main effect. An elastic bandage naturally shows long stretch properties, since the material has a low stiffness and offers only low resistance to the muscle pump. Long stretch bandages have a high resting pressure and a low working pressure. An inelastic bandage with short stretch properties has a high stiffness and gives resistance to the muscle pump. Short stretch bandages have a low resting pressure and high working pressure. The higher the stiffness, the higher the working pressure and the effect of the muscle pump. The higher the stiffness of a compression device, the higher the working pressure and the effect of the muscle pump. The material of the compression device has a main effect. A measurement of sub-bandage pressure of different compression devices can illustrate their static stiffness index. The static stiffness index is the difference in pressure between lying and standing position. For measuring the compression, there are different systems available. Here, the Pico Press compression measurement system is used. A pressure sensor is placed at point B1 of a patient's leg. The measurements begin after the compression bandage is completely applied. When wearing a short stretch compression bandage, which is an example for inelastic material, the pressure applied reaches a certain compression in lying position. In that case, approximately 40 millimeter mercury. The pressure measured is called resting pressure. With inelastic material, the pressure rises significantly when standing up. Here we can see the static stiffness index, the difference in pressure between lying and standing position. In this case of inelastic material, the static stiffness is considerably higher than 10. As recommended by the International Compression Club's consensus paper, only a static stiffness index of 10 and more is able to lead to an improvement in ulcer healing outcomes. While exercising, compression with inelastic material leads to high pressure peaks. The pressure measured is called working pressure. Wearing a long stretch bandage, which is an example for elastic material, the measurement reaches a certain compression as well. In this case, 40 millimeter mercury. When standing up, the pressure also rises, but not as much compared to the inelastic material due to its low stiffness. The difference between lying and standing position is less. Therefore, the static stiffness index is less than 10. When exercising, this becomes evident even more. The peak values don't rise much. As recommended by the consensus paper of the International Compression Club, only a static stiffness index of 10 and more is able to lead to an improvement in ulcer healing outcomes. Using an integrated approach, in addition to treatment of the underlying disease, medical skin care, medical skin protection, and a phase-appropriate wound care are important prerequisites for a successful healing process of venous leg ulcers. Protection of the wound edge is particularly important in the treatment of chronic wounds. The area surrounding the wound must be protected 
in order to avoid maceration, caused by severe exudation when the uptake capacity of the wound dressing is limited. Mechanical irritation, such as removal of an adhesive dressing from the skin, also adds additional stress. Prophylactic treatment, including protection of the wound edge, prevents damage from exudate and mechanical irritation for a few days. It is not only the edge directly around the wound that becomes stressed due to wound treatment, but also skin surrounding this. Mechanical stress, for example, due to compression treatment, can lead to irritation of the skin surrounding the wound too. This occurs as patients often have sensitive skin in the first place. Phase-appropriate wound treatment adapted to the status of the wound ensures the best possible chances of healing. For each healing phase, there are specific products available for the effective treatment of leg ulcer wounds. It is important to ensure the choice of products that meet the requirements of effective debridement, reduction of the bacterial load, and exudate management. The management of wound healing requires preparation of the wound bed, including wound cleaning and reduction of pathogens, as well as stimulation of the granulation and epithelialization of the wound with sufficient exudate management. The therapy of a venous leg ulcer is holistic. It depends on selecting the right compression system for the individual patient. If necessary, it may be combined with concomitant treatment, such as wound management and medical skin care. The compliance of the patient is the first issue in compression therapy, regardless of the existence of an edema. Especially for a non-compliant patient, a zinc paste bandage can be used. With a compliant patient showing signs of edema, multilayer bandaging is appropriate. In the event there is no edema present, the patient can wear a 2-in-1 compression system. This would also be the next step after an edema has been successfully reduced by compression bandaging therapy. After venous leg ulcers have been healed, they frequently return. Recurrences as well as new ulcers on other parts of the lower leg may appear. In order to avoid the recurrence of ulcers, continuous aftercare with light compression and preventative skin care is necessary. BSN Medical offers a full range of products, covering three therapy elements of this integrated approach in order to effectively treat venous leg ulcers. The new Job's multilayer systems contain all components needed for adequate compression in the treatment of venous leg ulcers. Comprofor can be combined with any phase appropriate wound dressing. The CootyMed range offers a comprehensive choice of dressings for every wound healing stage. Job's Comprofor provides sustained compression for up to 7 days and graduated compression of approximately 40 mm mercury at the ankle and approximately 17 mm mercury below the knee with the necessary stiffness recommended by the International Compression Club. The Job's Comprofor kits combine components for effective ulcer treatment. The components allow for easy and safe application, minimizing nursing care time. Job's Comprofor is also available in latex-free versions. The use of latex-free material reduces the risk of allergies. Job's Comprofor No. 1 is a padding bandage. Job's Comprofor No. 2 is a light support bandage. Job's Comprofor No. 3 is a light compression bandage not included in Job's Comprofor light kits. Job's Comprofor No. 4 is a cohesive elastic bandage. Please note that the Job's Comprofor light kits apply lower compression levels.
Job's Comprofor light can be used for the treatment of mixed leg ulcers with an ABPI of between 0.6 and 0.8. The ankle circumference is measured before the treatment begins. The application of compression systems threatens the skin by friction and shearing forces and most often causes irritation and dryness to the skin. Regular intensive skin care of the lower legs prevents irritation. Very high moisture needs are met by foam products containing urea. The new Job's multilayer bandages contain all components needed for adequate compression in the treatment of venous leg ulcers. Job's Comprofor No. 1 is a padding bandage for the protection of bony prominences. Start at the base of the toes. Apply smoothly and evenly onto the flex foot without stretching the material. Make sure the heel is completely covered. Then work up the leg in a spiral with 50% overlap. Finish just below the knee, the tubal tuberosity. Cut or tear off excess bandage. You can use the remaining padding material for additional padding and protection of prominent bony areas. Use additional padding for thin legs to reach an ankle circumference of at least 18 centimeters or 7 and 1 8 inch. Job's Comprofor No. 2 is a bandage for further padding and absorption. Now start at the base of the toes. Again, anchor the bandage with two turns around the foot. Bring the bandage tightly under the arc of the foot and the bottom of the heel. Work up the leg using a spiral technique. Ensure a 50% overlap with every turn. Finish by cutting any excess bandage to leave a straight line. If necessary, use adhesive tape to secure the bandage. If you use Job's Comprofor Light or Job's Comprofor Light Latex Free for reduced compression, proceed with the application of Job's Comprofor No. 4. Job's Comprofor No. 3 is a long stretch bandage which adds the first layer of compression. Again, give the bandage anchorage with two turns around the foot. Pass behind the Achilles tendon and ensure a tight fit on the heel. Then take the bandage across the front of the foot with an extension of 50%. Pass it horizontally across the Achilles tendon and, still at an angle of 45 degrees, Move downward to the front of the ankle by using a figure 8 technique. Continue with the figure 8 technique while ensuring a 50% overlap with the help of the central line on the bandage. The application of Job's Comprofor No. 3 with a spiral technique with a 50% overlap would result in a slightly lower compression. Finish at the same place as before. Cut any excess bandage and secure the bandage with tape. Job's Comprofor No. 4 is a cohesive bandage with short stretch properties. Anchor the bandage with two turns around the foot. Work around the Achilles tendon and cover the heel with 50% extension. Then fit the bandage under the arc of the foot and work upward across the foot. Continue up the leg to the tibial tuberosity in a spiral 
with 50% overlap. Finish at the top by cutting the bandage. Ensure the bandage is not stretched on the last 15 centimeters or approximately on the last 6 inches. Secure the bandage by pressing lightly. The cohesive material will form a permanent bond and secure the bandage. Smooth out the layers with your hands and examine for any gaps in the compression bandage. Use scissors for removal of the system. The new Jobs Ulcer Care is designed for maximum patient compliance. It allows effective management of a venous leg ulcer while offering ease of use at the same time. The new Jobs Ulcer Care provides graduated compression of 40 millimeter mercury to reach the doctor's recommended pressure for the healing of venous leg ulcers. Jobs Ulcer Care is a two-in-one system for easy handling by patients or caregivers. Consisting of a silk liner and an outer stocking, both components support a fast moisture transport for more patient comfort. In order to fit a wide variety of leg shapes, the system now comes in seven sizes. Preferably, measurements should be taken in the morning, when the leg is at its smallest. The new Jobs Ulcer Care Liner provides mild compression for the non-ambulatory patient. It can be worn 24 hours a day or it can be used to help manage a leg edema during bed rest. For high wearing comfort, the stocking has an integrated heel and toe. The Jobs Ulcer Care Liner contains silk to promote healthy skin and to facilitate the donning of the outer sock, therefore providing maximum comfort. Job's Ulcer Care is designed for patient self-management. It facilitates easy changing of the wound dressing and allows for improved personal hygiene and bathing. For high wearing comfort, the outer stocking has an open toe and an integrated heel. It is available in beige and black. The Job's Ulcer Care is also available in a new zippered version. The zipper has been improved for easy donning and has an improved locking system to keep the closed zipper in place. For optimum flexibility, Job's Ulcer Care is available with a zipper on the left or the right side, in each case, on the opposite side of the wound. Both the new Job's Ulcer Care liner and the outer stocking are washable for hygienic reuse. Job's Ulcer Care is compatible with common footwear and clothing, enabling a normal lifestyle. It also delivers a high stiffness factor. The special design of the outer stockings pattern provides more friction to the liner, enhancing the system's stiffness. As recommended by the International Compression Club's consensus paper, only a static stiffness index of 10 and more is able to lead to an improvement in ulcer healing outcomes. The new Jobs Ulcer Care is the perfect combination for providing a higher quality of life for ulcer patients. BSN Medical provides physicians and caregivers with a broad assortment offering a full-spectrum solution to the challenges of venous ulcer treatment. The CootyMed Advanced Wound Care range helps to create ideal conditions for wound healing, from autolytic debridement, 
reduction of the bacterial load, and exudate management to medical skin care. Job's compression stockings, together with a full range of BSN medical compression bandages, help effectively restore venous flow at any stage of wound healing and facilitate recurrence prevention. All in all, a comprehensive approach in the therapy of venous leg ulcer.